Good afternoon guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode of our course management series really and welcome to the probably the hardest par 3 in Yorkshire so here today we're going to play the fourth here at Waterfront it's uphill 223 yards to the middle of the green the pins at the back today so it is playing around about 240 yards so 240 yards but slightly into the wind as well so we're looking at 250 yards so for you amateurs for myself really obviously this is a very tough hole i want to try and get out here with the least amount of damage as possible so if i can get out with a three for me i'm even happy with a bogey here i know i've got a par five next which i can take advantage of but here we want to get out there it's very narrow obviously it all balls down short so you've got a little bit of a fairway in front so if i was a handicapped golfer most of you are going to have to be hitting three woods or drivers here, a lot of drivers. I mean, I'm on the edge of hitting a three wood. But if you can get it up to the top, into that fairway ball, or you can chip it to the middle of the green and have two putts, you're going to get a shot here. So you're going to get out of there with a four, net par, very happy. Even a five net bogey, I'd be very happy with. But what I see a lot of times is people here, because they want to get a green, it's a par three, they don't want to hit driver, so they hit three wood harder, boom, straight into the trees on the right, or they pull it straight into the trees on the left, which is a hazard and it is pretty much dead. So, again, it's a common theme that we've gone through the last couple of weeks, swinging in balance. If I can swing in balance, get a decent contact, and I can get it relatively straight and up to the top, I know I've got a chance of chipping on, if you've watched the chipping videos, hopefully. And then from there, if you've watched the putting videos, we should be able to get out of there with two putts maximum. Not having three putts, we start to limit our score and we can start to get the handicap down. So, as always, I'm going to use the tee to my advantage, although the last couple of weeks trying to use the tee to my advantage has not necessarily worked. It's also not put me in any trouble. So I'm going to tee up here on the right hand side, although we can see here there's a little bit of a dip. So it would mean the ball is quite a lot below my feet and that's something that we want to look at on tees obviously we want to look in which direction they're pointing to start with because they can be sending you in different angles but we also don't want to be on a slope because that's going to make it harder for contact and just make it harder and on this hole it's already hard enough so i'm going to go back a little bit and i'm going to come a little bit closer to the middle and then from there you can visualize the shot i want to play have a practice swing and then we're now going to come in play that shot pick my point in front where i want to start the ball and then swing in balance so i couldn't hit that much better it was slightly low on the face but you're going to see there it is still short so i'm probably 20 or 30 yards short so my next club up would be my three wood that's a little bit higher lofter so it's closer to a four wood or five wood which would probably have left me the same but the longer club i go with potentially there's more error that i could get on there so for me i know that this is going to leave me in the bowl so for you guys if it's a three wood or if it's a driver in balance if that leaves you there i know i've got a good short game i can hopefully chip and put and get out of here and if not i've limited it now to a four i've not hit it that into the trees i've not hit it into the hazard so I'm not adding extra shots that I don't need to have. So let's get up there. So we can see that I've hit a really good shot. It's still not reached the green, so I am around about 20 yards short. It stayed here on the probably the semi cut. So We'll come in now and have a look at the lie. The lie sat down in a little bit of a dead patch, so really. There's no grass underneath that ball. It's a tough lie. For a tough hole, it's just starting to get worse and worse. But obviously, I've assessed that lie now. I know it's going to be very hard to get a wedge to that. So I've got to think now. I've got a lot of green to work with. So let's have a look up. Let's walk up there, start to see if I can see which way it's going to break. And then from there, come back and choose the right club for the shot. So as I'm walking up here, I know I've got a little bit, I'm on a little bit of an upslope even. So I know I've got loft. I know the lie's not great, but I know I've got a little bit of a launch pad that's going to get it up into the air. Then obviously what I want to get is something that's going to run out, something that's going to run up to the hole and give me a chance of getting as close as possible. 
with the least amount of effort really so looking here i can look at landing it here on the first the first flat spot of the green so i'm going to be landing it very early so that's for me now thinking okay if i went with a nine iron or an eight iron that might be carrying up here will it get any check will it get any spin it all depends on the contact obviously it's a little bit wet today so it might not get some but there's a lot of guessing work that goes into that so i can't be consistent because i don't know what kind of contact i'm going to get and how it's going to react with the wet ground and the lie so something landing here that starts to get me thinking more let me start to think about a hybrid the hybrid i've just hit off the tee so i'm going hybrid hybrid to a par three there you go folks it's not just you guys who do that i will also do that I can get that rolling, I can get that landing here early and I can start to judge how that's going to roll out. I know and I've looked, it's a right to left putt, so I know if I get this starting a little bit right of the hole, I can get that to work back. But I can control a lot better with my hybrid where that's going to land and how much it's going to roll out. I don't need to worry about check or it running away from me because I know how that's going to come off that face. I know how it's going to react. I know it's not going to grip. I know it's not going to have any check. So I should be able to judge the distance a lot better. Get me hopefully inside six feet. Again, I'm probably 20, 20 yards away. So tour average is going to be inside four feet from here, the best on tour. If I can get inside six, I'm probably tour average. And then from there for me, it's 75 percent make rate so i'm giving myself a bigger zone if i'm inside six feet I'm, I'm happy and i'm confident i'm not trying to put it and put a lot of stress on getting it to within a foot and within a tapping so inside six feet gives me a good chance again it's a very hard hole so i want to get out here limit the damage and move on to the next so we obviously just look there so i'm going to get my hybrid now and it's a shot that I get amateurs to use more and more often now because it's something that from this one I would see a lot of amateurs get the 56, even the 58 or 60 and try and fly it all the way there and it comes up 20, 30 feet short or they thin it off this line so again it's slightly above our feet so it's slightly on an upslope start to get missed strikes, start to thin it over the back and give themselves another chip the opposite then is like I said earlier, they go to something like a 9 iron and 8 iron but they still don't know how that's going to check, how that's going to react when it hits the green. So hybrid, we can be very consistent. I'm going to grip down onto the shaft here and treat it like a put in motion. So from here, a couple of swings looking at the hole just like we would with putting. And from in here, into play. So a pretty good chip, it's a little bit outside 6 feet, more like 8 feet, but I would say it didn't turn as much as I thought. So obviously the brake, if it had have broke, if it had have taken any brake, it would have started to work into here which would be easily inside my 6 foot goal. So a tough putt now for par, but again I've got a good chance, that was nice and easy. And I've now, like I say, I've got a good chance, I'm not 30, to, well I'm not 20, 30 feet away where it's very unlikely I'm going to hold it and there's a lot more pressure and especially when it comes to amateurs a lot more pressure from there you then blast it six feet past or leave it short we quickly put in a three put because we're trying to get out of there with a par so I've given myself a good chance let's give it a roll so similar distance to last week's put obviously as you saw last week it leaped out I thought it was perfect so let's hopefully make amends and hold this one so it is 50-50 from this range, so hopefully this is my one out of the two. Giving that a two right to left. Again, line the, line the ball up to the spot I've picked. Then come in and do my normal routine, so having a quick look at the hole and making some strokes for my pace. Good. So, a par 3 that was not very easy, but I've been able to plot my way around, hit a hybrid just short, even though I hit a really good shot. Then I've made sure that I've assessed my lie, 
thought about what's the percentage shot to chip it as close as possible. Tour average from that distance will be, well, average will be six feet. I hit it just outside that. So again, if you can start to hit those shots, percentage shots, I didn't have to do much work with that rescue chip. I had the loft because I was on the upslope. Even if I was on the flat, I could still use that. I got that ball rolling as soon as possible and then I can judge the distance a little bit better. Even with the ground still having a little bit of wetness in it, still having a bit of dew from the morning, I've been able to judge that distance and then obviously hold a very good putt. But if I miss that, I wouldn't be too dissatisfied because it's a very hard hole. If I got out with here with a four, you know, I'm still happy. But I've taken out the double bogey. I've made sure that I've hit it into that zone at the front of the green. I've then been able to chip up and, like I say, make a putt. So for you mid-handicap, even low-handicap, high-handicap golfers, think percentages. If we swing in balance and I get my ball up there, start to look at it as a par four. So start to think about using your shot on this hole. It is a very, obviously, low stroke index hole, so you're going to get a shot. So from there, plot your way round. It's not like a normal par three where we're trying to hit something maybe 150 yards, 160 where we're using an iron, we're comfortable, and we're thinking, right, can we attack the pin, can we not? Obviously here, we're not even thinking about the pin. I didn't think about the pin. All I thought about is leave myself on the green or just short. The pin's at the back. I've got a lot of green to work with, so I know that I'm gonna be able to chip up there, but if I get a four, it's not a bad score. So guys, thanks for watching. Next week, we will be on the par five. So now, obviously, I'm still level par, we're going to play the par 5 next and so I'm going to see if I can get a birdie or if I'm in the rough what kind of chip shots I have because it's another risk and reward hole. I can go for it in two. If I get close what kind of chip shot will I have? Will I hit the green? And what would I suggest for you amateurs? Guys, thanks for watching. Enjoy your weekend and I will see you again on Monday.